Howdy and welcome back. I am Oliver the Shoe Man and today we're going to be re-welting a pair of Iron Rangers. These are the 8111s, size 90. Uh, we're doing new soles, Vibram mini lugs, and um, same style heels. But this video is just going to be me, I guess, welting the shoe on Welting Wednesday. I missed it last week because I didn't have any shoes that needed to be welted. So that was unfortunate. And now I have like three or four pair. So I got plenty of shoes. I'm going to start off by skiving one end of the welt down. And starting from here, we're going to go all the way around back to here. 270 degree. Three, if it was a 360, it can go all the way around the back of the heel. But we're just going to start off at one ankle bone, I guess, because that's where your ankle lines up, and go to the other side. We're going to be following the holes, the original welt holes. And if y'all noticed, I finally was able to set up a little. Uh, I want to say, well, I am using a tripod, but the tripod's not designed for this angle, but I was able to make it work. I'll just, I'll insert a little picture that I have, that I took of my setup. But hopefully this way, y'all can see a little bit better what I'm doing, All right? Let's see. That's the goal, at least. Oh, yeah. Let's see. So, if you are new, and this is your first video, you're watching all of these holes. We are running a stitch through this little groove here, out the back end where it kind of tapers down into those holes, in through the gimming, which is this white canvas that gets glued to the footbed. And that has like a, a 90 degree wall that you stitch everything together. The uppers. <sighs> all day, man. It doesn't go off all day. And the moment I start recording is the moment it goes off. All right, I'm gonna pause here and then Come back because that's going to be on for a couple of minutes. And we're back. Back to silence, peace, and quiet. So, yeah, see, as I was, as I was talking, saying. You run your needle through the groove into those holes on the sides of the boot. So you got what we call the outside thread and our inside thread. So you find your next hole, line up your needle. You wanna make sure that you're going through the exact same hole and not poking anything. So. You see how it came out the other side? Now that's got a hook on the end. And then you loop your inside thread onto that hook. You pull it through. Now you have a loop. You pull your outside loop, outside thread, I'm sorry, through the loop. And you pull back your inside thread and pull tight. This side, I wrap around the handle, and this side I just use my hand. Some people put tape, I, I really don't use tape. Some people have little finger covers. I don't need it. I mean, there might, there's been times where, right in that groove, like where, where it flexes or bends, 
this this rope you pull so tight and for so long it cuts it makes a cut and my goodness it hurts but I haven't been doing menu welts lately so I don't have that and I don't really need to cover right now but yeah it's, I mean it's a simple process it's just really time consuming and if resoles are done properly then you probably shouldn't have to replace this um, but also maintenance on the boots if this piece gets oh. well i guess my thing didn't work out hold on let me re reset all right we should be set should be good to go still hopefully no more camera malfunctions forgot what i was saying before oh okay so yeah if you don't condition your boots regularly well not regularly but however often you need because with each person and each shoe it's different i always say it depends on how much you wear the shoe and what conditions you're wearing them in um, but if you don't condition them, this piece can get really dry. And this piece is what's holding the footbed, that gimming, the lining, all of the uppers together. And the soles get stitched to this piece, this, this welt. Alright, that's where the stitch goes on. You put the welt on top and it gets stitched so if this piece is dry and cracking and not not um, strong then obviously you can't put new soles on there or else it's gonna just fall apart and then you have to redo the soles and it's not gonna be fun so make sure you condition your your shoes and get into those the cracks of the the welt Make sure that stays nice and conditioned. So that way when you need to resole, we don't have to go through with this process and end up having to pay more for new soles. All right, nearing the end of the month, the first month of the year, that's crazy. Already, time has flown by. It seems like that. I don't know about y'all. I'm still 21, so I mean, high school. A few years ago, I graduated 2020. I guess it's almost been. Wow, well, it's already been four years. Jeez. But it seems like in high school, the time just dragged. Like it just went on forever. But after high school that's when like time started to fly by after i started doing stuff with the business and it seemed like i don't have enough time in the day to do much but i guess that's a good thing i mean time flies when you're having a good time they say and i mean i enjoy what i do so i'm very blessed to be in the position that I am now. <clears throat> Alright, so just want to show you guys so far what we have. There's that tapered side, and then we got a little, like, you know, three eighths. I think three eighths, yeah. So it goes a quarter, three eighths, half. I guess that would be considered five eighths. I don't know, but around the toe is where it kind of gets tricky because the welt likes to kind of hug the uppers and not lay flat until the sole comes on. It kind of curves up. 
So obviously the toe has a lot of stress going around that tight curve. So you gotta be very careful with how you stitch the toe and not make it so tight to where it's like hugging the uppers like that. You don't want that. Because when you go to flatten it out, you could rip the actual leather itself or rip the string or just be generous with it. Take your time, make sure it's done right. All right, so I just want to share something with y'all. Something I read today, it is Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. It says, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Now, you can unpack a lot there. There's a lot of that. A lot to unpack, I guess you could say. Now, some may say that we aren't to judge others at all and just to stand idly by while people are doing crazy, crazy things and sitting up. It's that that's not that's not the truth, because we are to. It's a very fine line between judging people. I put this because you want them to get better and then just judging people because you just like despise them I guess and you typically it's okay to judge in a way that you want them to get better if that makes sense and maybe judge is a bad word or bad use of word what I'm thinking about but basically if you see a friend in their car, not paying attention, right? Driving off, or driving in their car, about to run off the road and off a cliff. Obviously, you're going to yell and say, hey, you're about to go towards the cliffs, stop. It's the same thing. If you see something that someone is doing that's not good for them it's against the against what the book says that jesus and against one of the ten commandments and it could lead them to hell i mean you're gonna want you don't want them to go to hell you're gonna tell them hey this is not good god says not to do it and if you i mean unless you repent then it's sad to say but you're going to hell and obviously you're going to say it in a, a loving way. You're not going to just yell at them, stop. Or you're going to go to hell. I mean, that's it's not the way you're going to... It's not the way you're supposed to do it. I mean, Jesus, when he was on earth, from what I read and understand and have learned, didn't do it that way. But you just want to, to teach them and show them with love what the right thing to do is and why. Because, I mean, if someone just comes up to you says you're not you're doing this thing as bad stop it you're gonna be like well this is what i've been doing why is this bad so you have to kind of know why they you have to be i guess informed of the bible and what because the bible has some real life I guess implications I think that's the right way of saying it basically if it says not to do something it's not just because Jesus God doesn't want you to do it that's because there's real life consequences for that action so when you're directing I'm well, not directing but when you're trying to lead the ones that you love away from sin let's say you have to be prepared to show them 
reasons why it's smart to turn away. I'm trying to think of an example. I mean, kind of a silly example is let's go back to that car off the cliff. Like, if you continue to drive off, drive, and you run off the cliff, you're going to die. I mean, it's as simple as that gets, but it's kind of the same thing. Okay, I like to flex the upper or the welt up around the toe when I get around it. But so far, it's going so good. It's going good. Not going crazy high as far as like it's hugging the uppers. But yeah, but you also got to be, you also got to be careful. I mean, you can't be a hypocrite. You can't tell someone, don't do this, and then go doing that same thing. Like, don't, don't tell, if you, like, say, okay, I'm sorry. I am, it's late. If you are smoking cigarettes, and you tell someone, don't smoke cigarettes, and then you turn around and smoke a cigarette, I mean, that's complete hypocrisy. You can't, you can't do that. So, however you judge others will be judged to you by the same measure. That's what scripture says. So, obviously, let's see if I could adjust to you guys. If you judge according to the law, the law meaning scripture, the Ten Commandments, and you follow those to the best of your ability. That's a whole nother thing. God knows we're not going to be perfect. But as long as we try and we repent for the times that we sin, then we're good. I mean, that's the reason Jesus came and died for us. Because he knows that we can't lead perfect lives. That we're going to mess up. So, it's kind of a fine line. Like I said, because we can't be perfect. So who are we to judge others to be perfect? But at the same time, you have to, I guess, call out the darkness in this world. Because we're supposed to be lights. And obviously you want to do that with love. So that people will actually listen to you. I'm not really like, ah... No, you're crazy. You're just one of those crazy Christians. Don't want to do that. No, 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 no. I'm going to represent the kingdom of heaven. God. Because that's what we are. When we're, if you profess Christianity, you are a living testament. And the living testament of God. I mean, if you're saying you're a Christian, but you're going out and doing stupid, crazy things that goes directly against God. And I mean, what kind of example are you setting for the non-believers? They're just going to think, oh, you're full of crap. Your religion is worthless, which it's not, obviously. But just something to think about as I was reading that today, I was kind of thought about it. It's a very fine line. I'm not claiming to know all the answers. I'm still learning more and more about God and my walk with, with Jesus Christ and all the the relationship part. But that's something every single person, like every single professing Christian is. It's a constant walk. It's a constant relationship. You're never going to know it all. You're always going to be learning something. You're always going to mess up. But God's always going to be there to pick you up when you fall, as long as you ask for it. You just try to live each day to the best of your ability, following what Jesus did. And what did he do? He was, he prayed, he read the word. Well, back then when he was here on earth, they only had the Old Testament. Um, which I think is the Torah. That's what the the Jews believe in. Jewish people, their beliefs. Which is the fir first, I think, 
four or five books, I could be wrong, of the Bible before the New Testament. And he went to church pretty much every Sabbath and taught in the synagogues. I mean, most of the times he just got thrown out because he would say what the Pharisees and Sadducees thought to be blas blasphemous. But he was just calling up the sin in their own lives and they didn't like it too much. So that's why he was crucified. I mean, from their point of view. This is what the Christians know and believe. Something I'm, I'm actually learning a lot about religions and how they're, some of them are tied together. Kind of the history behind all that. Because Jesus was a Jew. If y'all don't know, he was. <clears throat> and his kind of ministry, I guess you can call, was intended for the Jews. And then after he was crucified, his 12 disciples he sent out to go continue his ministry, but not only to the Jews, but also to the Gentiles. Which now, I mean, and if you're not a Jew, then you're technically considered a Gentile. Um, and then, if you're a Gentile converted to, to believing in Jesus Christ, and that he died on the earth for our sins, then you're considered a Christian. But surprisingly enough, most people don't know that Jesus was a Jew. But basic, what I, basically what I've, uh, what I have summarized or concluded is, as long as you live each day, trying your best to live how Jesus did repenting and asking for forgiveness when we fall and stumble and just trying to be a light and further the kingdom of God in however way he calls you to not all of us are called to to sell everything and go start a church or go do street ministry and street evangelism is what they call it not everyone's called to do that oops sorry my neck is like right by the camera adjuster thing. So sometimes I hit it. But we're nearing the end here. So I mean, not too hard of a job. Like I said, it's just time consuming. And that's why sometimes it's more expensive to get shoes fixed when we have to repair or replace this because this is what already 18 19 20 minutes for one shoot so it's a little over an hour for it's about an hour for, for both pairs i guess you can call it so and unfortunately the machines that they that they used to sew these on we don't have as cobblers and I mean I mean we can buy them but it's not really worth it I mean, yes I do a lot of welts but those holes that you guys saw at the beginning where the old welt was stitched to you want to follow those so you don't create new holes in the uppers and then you kind of trees grade it if you do so if you have holes, and then you go in between those holes, and then you make a, a weak spot in the shoe. And then the sole can start coming apart. And after that, there's not much you could do to fix that. Um, so, yeah, it takes long, but it's the right way to do it. You can set, see what I mean by it kind of hugs the uppers. But it get, it'll get flattened out once you put the sole on. So the next step is to put our shank in there, which helps support your foot to the arch, like the ball of your, he the ball of your heel, I think, to the ball of your foot. Um, 
fill this with cork, heel brand, sole, half sole, and heel base, lug sole. So that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I um, hope to see you guys next Wednesday. Y'all have a wonderful day. God bless.